So, with Venom, Let There Be Carnage just about to hit the cinemas, I thought it'd be a good idea to go and look at the first film, the Venom film. What have I found wrong with it? Well, let's find out. Join me, I'm Berryman, and this is 10 Things Wrong with Venom. Venom is a 2018 American superhero film featuring the Marvel Comics character of the same name. It tells the story of journalist Brock, who gains superpowers after becoming the host of an alien symbiote, whose species are planning to invade Earth. When the film was released, it received generally negative reviews for its narrative, inconsistent tone and lack of connections to Spider-Man, though Hardy's performance received some praise. But what have I found, the nitpicking YouTuber? Well, let's discuss 10 Things Wrong with Venom. Number 10. No fire damage. So, at the very beginning of this film, you see the Life Foundation's shuttle approaching Earth. Unfortunately, one of the symbiotes has escaped and it causes the ship to crash. Now, as that ship is actually entering Earth's atmosphere, it's not on the right descent pattern, and the ship turns into a giant fireball and starts breaking up. Cut the next scene, there's no fire damage. In fact, there's no fire damage to the ship or the location it landed. It's just like hit and broken up. There's no damage to the ship or area. There'd be fires everywhere. It would have actually done like a, you know, like a trail of damage, but there was nothing. Why not? Fire does not cost that much to actually put in a film. Number nine, air vents. So with the Life Foundation having three of the four symbiotes in their facilities, they're all stored in some sort of isolation chamber where they put test subjects like bunny rabbits or humans. Now, the thing is, in each one of these isolation rooms, whatever you want to call them, there's air vents and there are air vents in the floor. Now, these are liquid organisms. That's a very bad design choice, really, because what's to stop them sliding through that air vent and escaping? Nothing. Who designed this? No wonder what they keep escaping. Number eight, drones. Ah, oh, we're in the 21st century when the bad guys are using drones. Can't you remember the good old days where it was just hundreds and hundreds of bad guys you just shot down? But no, in this film they're using drones. And there's two things in particular about drones that are, I find, wrong with this film. First of all, there's a drone following Anne. Now, when I say following, I don't mean following from a distance or high up above like drones can do. It's literally right behind the car. You could not miss it. But she was too worried about Brock in the back of her car, but that's a different story. You would have actually seen this drone hovering behind your car. Pull the drone back, put the drone up, but hide it slightly. But the other thing wrong with these drones is what happens to them when they crash? Well, they go into a big ball of blue fire. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Blue fire? Why blue? Now, apparently this is what drones do when they crash. Now, I've watched a friend of mine, Scott Pinhorns, crash his drones on more than one occasion. And normally they just get damaged and then you repair them. I've not actually seen a drone smack into something and go into a big ball of blue fire. I've already said about missing fire. You've added fire here, but missed fire in the first bit. What? Number seven, CGI. Now, the CGI was criticised a lot when it was released, and I can see why. The CGI looks about 20 years out of date. It looks like the CGI you saw in like Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, back when that started. It's very shiny. Now, this is going to hurt people a lot, but the Venom CGI in Spider-Man 3 was better even though that film was appalling. But yeah, what, what, what the hell was going on with the CGI? Now, luckily, hopefully, fingers crossed, the trailer for Let There Be Carnage, the CGI looks like it has improved immensely. It doesn't look like wet and it looks realistic. 
But yeah, the CGI in this film was very subpar. SWAT team versus Venom. So now Venom's out in force. Brock and Venom are actually fighting as a team. So you're gonna get to see Venom in all his glory actually fighting. Nope. They shot smoke grenades so you couldn't actually see what was going on. Let's face it, the film's called Venom. We want to see Venom. Now, we did later on, but all you saw was tentacles attacking at all these cops. One, they're cops, they're actually good guys, but we would have liked to see a bit of Venom, but no, you just wanted to add lots of smoke. Okay, it's your film. Number five, Venom Coach. Thomas Hardy is a fantastic actor, and it's not the first time he's played a dual role in a film. Go and look at Legend. So he's used to this sort of thing. So you give him some material and he will give you what you want, and fantastically. But like most actors, he needs help. So who did they get to help Tom Hardy portray Venom? Well, they got his son Louis to train him. Not a professional, they got his son. In fact, his son was the reason he took this film on in the first place, because he's a massive Spider-Man stroke Venom fan. So much so, he trained his dad how to play Venom and Eddie Brock. Now, yes, I will admit, that's a cool fact about this film, but the fact that you're getting a child to train you is wrong. Number four, poor security. I'm pretty sure I said this a few weeks ago in my Godzilla vs Kong. What is it about Hollywood portraying these big multi-billion dollar companies that are so high tech they can't afford their own security? A lot of the issues in this film would have been fixed if there were security cameras. One, you don't see security cameras in this film, but two, they didn't know who was actually broken into. Most companies would review the CCTV, but this place couldn't do that because they didn't have any. And even if they had CCTV, they could have stopped Eddie Brock before he got to Venom. But now, before anyone says, yes, but you can't have the cameras in the labs, I sort of get that. But what about the corridors going to the labs? In fact, I'm pretty sure it's essential to have security and cameras there. Now, there were security guards, just no cameras. Why not? Number three, patient doctor confidentiality. Okay, who has ever been to the doctors uh, with something embarrassing that you don't want anyone to know? But you tell your doctor because they're bound by an oath of confidentiality. Your doctor's not going to go home and tell his missus. Well, he does in this film. But what makes it worse is the doctor's missus is the patient's ex. Seriously, he rings up, the do Dan, the doctor, rings Anne up and tells Anne everything that's wrong with Eddie Brock. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. But he didn't just go tell her details, he went into very intimate details about what was wrong with him. That wasn't the best thing to do. In fact, this guy wants your girlfriend He's now gonna get you struck off. Number two, Carlton Drake. So Carlton Drake is actually a character from the Spider-Man comics. However, that's where the similarities lie. So at the end of this film, spoiler alert, at the end of this film, Carlton turns into Riot. That's not what happens in the comic books. Yeah, I'm a nitpick and I found these things out. Carlton Drake turns into the man spider. So I sort of can understand why they didn't go down that road because they couldn't really use Spider-Man so you can't really have the man spider. But who was Riot? Well, the original Riot was Trevor Cole. And then obviously it, does, it did move on to uh, other people. Eventually it ended up in a dog, which Venom did in this film, but that's a different story. But yeah, the whole thing about Carlton Drake wasn't actually very comic book accurate. <sighs> oh well, never mind. Number one, Star Trek II. 
Right, I'm going to be honest. Any regular viewer of my show or my TikToks know Star Trek II is my favourite film of all time. Now this film is littered with Easter eggs, but this one I don't like. It's the same flaw that Star Trek Into Darkness did as well, and I hated that, and that was a Star Trek film. So you can imagine what I was like in a non-Star Trek film. Want to know what I'm talking about? Well, Carlton Drake has put Isaac in the isolation room and then starts giving this whole speech about Abraham and Isaac and Isaac was a brave one. Basically, it's another form of the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Just not in so many words. But it gets worse. They do the whole hand on the glass scene from Star Trek II. No, Star Trek II is off limits. Do not rip it off. Except for Kill Bill. Kill Bill did actually pull that one off and I will never... F yeah, that's the only film that got away with that one. Final thoughts. So I said at the beginning of this video, it was very negative review. What the hell were these critics thinking about? You couldn't have anything to do with Spider-Man because at this moment in time, Spider-Man was in the MCU. Sony are doing a Spider-Verse with a no Spider-Man, which sort of works because Venom did that. So the origin story had to change and they hit this on the head. I don't mind that. Apparently it's narrative isn't that good. Why? Because it's simple? It's funny. Just sit back, watch the film, have a laugh and enjoy yourself. Because at the end of the day, that's what you want from a film. That's what this film delivers. And I actually enjoyed that. It was funny. Tom Hardy taking some of his experience from Legend over to this film by recording Venom's lines first and then having them play back to him in an earpiece so he could react properly. That's Tom Hardy's for you. What more did you want from this film? It's a good film. It's not a long film. By all means, it's a good, let's sit down and watch this and have a laugh. Now, I've watched this film a couple of times, but the first time I watched it, I watched it with my missus who didn't really want to watch it, but hey, I'm a comic book nerd, so I was gonna watch it. And she found it enjoyable. And that's what you want. This film, did a good job. It portrayed Venom perfectly as an anti-hero, and I don't get where those people come from. Now, the CGI was appalling, but other than that, that's the only negative about this film. So what am I going to rank it? Well, the CGI is a bad thing. Yes, it is a simple story, but it's an enjoyable story, and it brilliantly sets up a sequel, which we are so excited for to see. I'm actually going to give this a 7 out of 10 berries. So that's what I think. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And on to next week, we're going to talk about a bad guy that you have to say his name three times. It's going to be interesting to see what your guesses are. But other than that, I will see you next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.